Okay, so my shelter is all set up. I told you guys I had wanted to come out here and try this poncho as a shelter. It's definitely not the most protective shelter ever, but definitely under there. You can always lower it. Anyways, I wanted to come out and try it and it looks pretty cool. It's set up really nice. Uh, this is the poncho, the oilskin poncho that I wore in a recent uh, rainy overnighter video that I did. So fall is the time for this type of gear for sure. Just before I came out here today, I oiled my bucksaw, put some bucksaw butter on it and it looks brand new again. It's so cool. the best one there ever was. All right, well, it's time to get my fire going and uh, start cooking some food. I've definitely got more than enough wood to go around here, so I'm gonna save some of the cutting for tomorrow. I'll uh, get this fire going and get some grub on.
snuck into the forest real quick, grab some birch bark. And brought a new fire steel for this trip. Look at this beast of a fire steel. It's crazy. I've had this for a long time. It's by Uber Leben. I don't know if I pronounced that right. <laughs> Anyways, so that's what I'm gonna use to make my fire. <laughs> When the birch bark is nice and thin like this, you can just kind of break it apart and rough it up. And uh, usually can get a pretty, will usually catch a spark, no problem. Why? That was easy. Okay, so while that fire builds up a bit, I'm gonna show you guys what I brought for food on this trip. So I'll start with what's in my cook up. I just got two farm fresh eggs. The other one's in there. The eggs stayed good, so that's good. All right, in here. Oh, oh, what a mess. All right, still got enough. <laughs> oh my goodness, oh my gosh. Um, so in here, as I was saying, I've got my coffee for the morning. I thought this was the one with butter in it. That's why I opened it like that. <laughs> for the morning I've got an English muffin, avocado. This is the one with butter in it. <laughs> for tonight. In here I've got some halloumi cheese. It's basically yeah, it's a hard cheese that you can actually grill on its own. It doesn't just melt. It's so, so good. In here we've got some broccolini for tomorrow. We've got some bacon wrapped up in here. It's supposed to be cold tonight, so this should stay nice tonight. I've got a potato and a nice piece of steak. I went out and got these three branches, I guess. Pretty small. And I'll show you what I'm gonna do with these. Got this stool top from Bushcraft Spain that I've never used before. I've had it for like two years. I've been always meaning to use it and I never did. So I'm gonna use it today. All right, I'm gonna tie them in the middle. like that. Put one there. One there. I don't think I made them tall enough. This could be a really short stool. <laughs> well. Let's try this. Oh yeah, here we go. Oh, wow, that's actually, that's actually really nice. Good 
gets you up off the ground. <sighs> That's not bad. Not too shabby. There. Okay. So. Let's get this stick figured out. Got my little spice kit that you guys love so much. my broccolini in there. I'm going to add a bit of water just so it doesn't stick to the bottom and so it can steam just a bit. Those are some nice coals. Alright, now I'll get this ready for my steak. I don't think I'm gonna cook the potato. It's gonna take too long and I'm too hungry. And so for cooking steak on the coals, I get all the coals ready first. Make sure they're nice and hot. Those look pretty good. It's a pretty thin steak, so it's okay if it cooks a little quicker. It's actually a really thin steak. This is gonna take like two minutes. So I get them all ready and then I blow off the top layer of like just fine, fine ash so it doesn't get all over my steak. Just like that. And then we just lay that right on there. Just gotta flip. Oh yeah, that's looking good. Okay, here we are. Everything looks really good. And next up in my spice kit, it's just some like, I, I call it Herbert Murray. It's all spice or whatever. That was a little much. Do the trick. <laughs> okay. Dinner is served. A little overcooked. This part would be nice and juicy. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, I was so hungry. This is awesome. Mm. I prefer to cook the broccolini over broccoli out here because broccoli is like, broccolini just seems to be more hearty. It doesn't like fall apart if you overcook it by accident and get all over the place and a little less messy to bring out. Mm. But they honestly taste very similar. Very nutritious anyway. Probably a little less nutritious with butter and salt on it. Hmm, <laughs> it's so good. <clears throat> so for anyone who watched my last video, you might recognize this plant but this is the sweet fern plant that we foraged and harvested in the last video. Today, I'm gonna to show you how you can make a tea out of it, just with the fresh leaves. So 
some water in there. And we'll get that boiling. Just throw those in there. Yeah. And we just let that steep for a bit. Okay, so while that is steeping, Let's get this whole thing going. This is what it looks like. If I could describe the taste of it, I would say that it's like really salty cheese curds. And I don't know if cheese curds is like just a Canadian thing or if other people know what those are, but <laughs> that's what it tastes like. And uh, and when it's grilled, oh my goodness. Oh, has that little smoky flavor to it. It's so good. There's nothing. I'm not gonna lie, cheese on the coals was kind of a bust, but I think it'll still turn out okay. Ooh. Cheese definitely didn't turn out as the best, but that's okay. Still really good. So. I don't always do this, but I should make a habit of it. And that is just hanging your food a little bit away from camp. I've never really had an issue, so I've kind of gotten lazy with it, but something as simple as just stashing it somewhere away from your camp. Up in a tree is probably good too, so the little ground critters don't get to it. It's good practice. Nothing too crazy, like as long as it's not in your camp. Well, camp's all cleaned up. <coughs> Fire's kind of going out, and uh, it's really dark now. I've got a little bit of Jameson to sip on as a nightcap. And um, I just wanted to read you guys, I have this book, Edible and Medicinal Plants of Canada. And uh, I've got quite a few bookmarks in there, but I did find the one on sweet fern. Since I've been talking so much about it lately, I thought I would read just a little bit of how beneficial it is. Almost the whole plant is edible. And basically under the subheading medicine, it says, Sweet fern was employed medicinally by a number of First Nations living in eastern Canada. The leaves were often made into a poultice to treat wounds such as sprains, swellings, inflammation, inflammation and poison ivy. Sweet fern leaves were combined with yarrow to treat swelling and combined with catnip to treat fevers. Interesting. Um, so I thought that was kind of cool and then so I thought that was pretty cool and then in other research that I've seen about sweet fern is that it's also like when you drink it as a tea it can be a de decongestant and uh, and some other things. I highly recommend if you plan on foraging anything um, just as a little disclaimer, uh, look up your own information, make sure that you're absolutely sure of what you're harvesting or what you're foraging for, but anyways, it's really cool. I'm only starting to dip into this stuff and I just find it so fascinating. Well guys, I'll leave you for the night here and uh, it's been a really good camp so far. So hopefully the night is good and it stays nice and calm because otherwise it's going to get really cold. But I think we'll be okay. I think it's supposed to be calm tonight and uh, definitely no rain in the forecast. So that's awesome. I'm all set up. I feel super cozy and uh, yeah, I'm ready for bed. Thank you guys so much for watching up to this point and good night. I'll see you in the morning.
morning. It's pretty damp, so I'm gonna stand it up all around just to get it drying.
do I keep doing that? Okay, we got breakfast on the go here. Bacon on a stick. And eggs just over to the side. So the eggs cooking like this, you have to be you have to do it very, very slowly because the eggs will explode if they cook too quickly. <laughs> you know from experience. But very cool way to cook them. So the hole in the top is just to relieve some of the air and the pressure that builds up while they're cooking. And uh I if I could show you, they're already turning white inside. Just a bit, ever so slightly. Well, my feet didn't turn out the best, but I'd like to try again another time. <laughs> Hopefully do it better. egg was just about to explode, so I took it away from the heat there for a second. Basically like making hard boiled eggs without actually boiling them. Bacon is super good. Let's do toast this guy. And I'm just gonna do that right over the bacon. Oh, that's perfect. Yes. That is a perfectly cooked egg, in my opinion. Mmm. Oh dear, we're losing bacon.
super tasty. It's not like pretty. It's very tasty. Set time of the video again. I've got the fire out, I'm all packed up, and uh, just gotta get the bike warmed up and ready to go, so. So as usual, thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Uh, please leave me some comments down below, hit the like button, and subscribe if you're new here. Um, I've got lots more camping adventures in the future, so definitely stay tuned. See you on the next one.